a little bit more because uh, his slide, I saw it, I, I feel uh, uh, like a lot of resonance. So, so now he said, I have a newer version. So I said, put it on, and I promise it will all send to you electronically of everyone. So please. Thank you. So what's on this screen is not what's on that screen. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, I'm a member of a lot of organizations because I pay my dues, so they all want me. <laughs> it's not for anything else. Oh, there we go. Um, so one of the things that Apapa Utah is doing, we're a new chapter. We started this year. Our grand opening was in May. Uh, even before we had the grand opening, we had a workshop called The Truth About Running for Office where we had elected officials come out and some campaign managers and talk to people who are interested in running for office from our community and tell them what it really means to run for office. Because so often people, people run for office because they're pissed off at the government, right? And they don't realize, they think that government is so screwed up, I can do a better job. And then they just file and they run with no idea what it really takes to run for office. Um, and then they're in for a rude awakening come election day. So the problem that uh, one of the things I identified is we're clearly underrepresented in government. And just in background, I've been in government for 30 years. I've been the presiding judge of the third largest criminal court in Utah for 21 years. I have not lost an election since 1978. And I'll never lose another one because the 2016 was my last one. I'm retiring. OK, uh, 2016 results. 56 candidates, APA candidates, ran for office for federal level. Only 17 got elected, 16 of which were incumbents. About half of them, half of our candidates, didn't even get out of the primary. At the state level, it gets even worse. 126 APA candidates nationwide, 36 got elected. And then at the local, so that's county and city, 123 were identified, 28 were elected. So we do run, um, but we're not winning. And there we go. What we've identified in looking at who the candidates were, their infrastructure, experience was the number one reason that we can identify as why people our candidates aren't winning. Time candidates, because they don't make it, they're one-time candidates. And so we don't have an experience, political experience. Uh, fundraising was, was a problem for many of them uh, because they had, lacked a network. Uh, to to draw from. So a couple lessons. To play the game, you have to know the rules of the game, right? When you learn to play chess, all of you play chess, right? You got to know what pieces can do what. Uh, but knowing the rules is not enough. You have to have a strategy. And the same thing is true in politics. Uh, successful candidates don't do it alone. They have a network. They have support, um, and uh, successful candidates had mentors, and they had infrastructure. So, minute left. So this is what the goal is, right? We want to do, we don't want to ask. We're going to stop asking elected officials to help us. We're going to become the elected officials and do it. I'm flying through this. I'm not showing you all of them. Uh, let's see. Elected officials. Let's look at that one. So elected office. This is, this is in Utah. So in 2018, uh, we elected two city council members. Um, and these are our goals. Uh, we have an APA attorney general, uh, Filipino and Chinese. Uh, we have a Japanese state senator. We have a state representative who's Chinese, uh, my sister. 
Yes, yes, clap for me because I had nothing to do with it. 2018, we added two city council members. And so our goal is 100% improvement in every election. So our next election, we're gonna try and get, capture 10 elected offices in, in the state. So that's, that's our goal. And this is how we're gonna do it because I'm running, I'm out of time, actually. Back, 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 one more. So one of the things uh, we're doing is a civic leadership series. Uh, it starts with the workshop. We're gonna identify people, then we're gonna start developing them. And we're focusing on city, county level, and then state level. And then when we're done with them, we're gonna send them to Michael, and we're gonna send them to Apex, so they can start running for federal offices as well. So, you know, we're gonna teach them the nuts and bolts. How do you campaign? How do you, you know, what's the filings? What's the reporting? How do you comply with the law? Because there's lots of rules about running for office and when things are due. And if you don't do them when they're due, you can get kicked off the ballot. So that's, uh, we're gonna walk them through that. Uh, in addition, we're gonna work on their messaging. You know, your, your message is your key. It's the door, that's what unlocks the door. You got 10 words to summarize why you're running. If you can get 10 words and can make them ask you a question, you just bought yourself 90 more seconds. It's all about messaging. You have to be able to engage people at their level. So we're gonna work on that, we're gonna talk about it. I'm out of time, so. <laughs> I message discipline includes stopping when you're supposed to stop. <laughs>